Come with me to explore this North African city that has caves, orange sandstone cliffs, camels, and beautiful rolling desert dunes. Let's go to the desert. I'm Chloe Jade, and today I'm taking you to Timimoon, Algeria. The flight was like any other taking off from Algiers, except this time landing was about to be in a beautiful desert. As I looked out the window, I couldn't believe my eyes because I wasn't expecting it to be that red. Piles of sand were absolutely everywhere as soon as we stepped out of the aircraft. We're in the desert and it is hot. I was stating the obvious, but it felt a lot hotter than any other region I'd been to in Algeria so far. Our hotel sent someone to pick us up and we also got a police escort from the airport because this is something that is required for all foreigners always in the southern parts of Algeria. The first thing I noticed was these striking red buildings. The second thing I noticed was all of these men on horses. Finally, we arrived to the hotel. The name is Dar El Hakim and I was so pleasantly surprised by this hotel. We've arrived, Dar El Hakim. So cute. This was $53 per night. Let's go to the desert. After we set down our bags, we went into a different room and they offered us some dates and tea and water in this super cute room. But honestly, I had no idea how lovely this room was going to be and I was so surprised at how much space there was. You know when you have no expectations? Well, that is essentially what I had for this hotel and so it surpassed all of my expectations. The hotel set us up with a local who could take us around and take us into the desert. His name was Kada and the first thing that stuck out to me was that he had a very fuzzy shifter. I felt it was a bit too hot for that, but maybe he was just used to the heat. The people that live in this region are known as the Amazigh and the Tuareg. Some people call these groups Berbers but that is a colonial term and comes from the word barbaric. I have learned that we should not use that word to describe the people of the desert in Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, and Libya. Immediately, the terrain began to change and it was looking more desert-like, but not yet dunes. Upon the first stop, I did not realize how strong the wind was. I truly do not think I have ever seen wind that was this strong to push back the door onto me. But personally, I think these views were absolutely worth it. Just gazing over the entire land like this is such a surreal feeling and it really gives you a sense of how small we truly are. As soon as we got on the road, Kada decided to stop and pick up some rocks from the ground. When he came back, although we could not totally communicate due to us not speaking French and him not speaking English very well, we realized that he was trying to show us the granite from the ground. He was showing us how they have these very valuable minerals and he asked us if we had this in our country as well. This is what I try to explain to people when they ask how do you communicate with others when you don't speak the same language. We are all human and it is very easy to connect and use sign language. Local music then came on the radio and Kata showed us local clapping. We drove on, a city appeared out of nowhere. It was so brightly red color. I would soon come to learn that these caves used to house the people that lived here for hundreds of years. When it was hot, they would go into the caves and seek refuge. But for a long time, people also lived in the caves because it stayed cool. The cave began to get progressively lower. He said to pay attention for the head. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, yes, I'm do. barely touching it now. <laughs> okay, now I have to pay attention for that. Just for reference, I am five foot one and a half, and Dilara is about five five. Immediately when we got into the cave, it was very musty. I'm not sure if you've ever been in a cave, but the air can be very stale, and I'm surprised that people were able to live in these caves. These caves are situated next to named Izge. It is known as a true fortress, and as we weaved our way through the ancient streets, I could only imagine what life used to be like here. However, if you saw my videos about Kartaia, there are very similar practices here as there are currently in Kartaia. Now, as I mentioned before, this city is 900 years old. Amasig people inhabited it, and these are the same people that are spread out throughout Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, and Libya. We continued to stroll a bit through the streets and then Dilara realized that she had a call that she needed to jump on. And I want to talk about this because a lot of people are wondering how we make money and are able to travel all the time. Well, Dilara specifically has a remote position. So this means that she has to jump on calls sometimes in the middle of the desert, even when it is completely inconvenient. I waited for her to finish her call. I explored this oasis. This oasis sustains 10,000 people and it is a runoff from the Atlas Mountains. It is absolutely impressive that the Atlas Mountains can supply all the water for literally all of the desert regions all over North Africa. I personally did not drink from the stream, but God, that did. He also then did something peculiar. He started letting the air out of the tires, and for a moment I had a slight panic because I had no idea what he was doing. And then I remembered something from my other times in the desert that people had done this before. So I'm not sure why we're letting the air out of the tires. I think it has to do with something with going into the dunes. I would think you would want to have really strong tires, but I guess you want to have weak tires, so... 
we'll see. And this was absolutely the best part of the day because the dunes were so beautiful, but it was also time for a bit of an adrenaline rush. And if I would have known that this is what we were doing, I probably would have said no, but we were already in the car and we were going. So I was in for a ride. Now, all of a sudden we came across a camel farm. The baby came up to me and then the mom mooed and it left. But if I'm being honest, I don't feel like these camels were totally well taken care of and that made me a little bit sad. The desert is truly never ending and you don't realize that there are roads, but at some point roads stop. And that was when we came to the end of the road. And just like that, the road was gone. But it was time to have tea with this man and then look at some of his crafts that he made using the sand. where we started to ride on the desert dunes and we were getting faster. To be honest, I had no idea that we were going to do this, so I was not super confident in Kata's abilities, but nonetheless, it started to be a really fun time. We were sticking our heads out the window and just feeling the breeze in our face. There are so many places where you can go and ride desert dunes, except this is probably one of the only places where you will see literally no one else there. For me, that's what I love about going places that have less tourism, is that you literally have all of the destination completely to yourself, so you have all of these dunes to just you. We sat for a while and just enjoyed the dunes. We looked out and took in that desert air until it was time to drive again. We abruptly stopped because Kada saw something in the sand. He went to go pick it up. It was a piece of a car and I really appreciated that he cared that much about his environment and the beautiful desert to pick it up and make sure that it was not damaging. Alas, it was almost time for us to end our day in the desert of Timmy Moon. We rode back, we had become great friends until we finally approached the city of Timmy Moon or village, I guess you could say. If you can see these buildings that look kind of like mud mosques, these are actually super old water towers, which I find really cool that they left them in the center of the city because it definitely adds some character when you're passing through the village. Another thing that I should point out about Timmy Moon is that people here dress very differently and act very differently than other parts of Algeria. And that is one of the things that I love so much about Algeria is that it is such a diverse country. Now, if I'm being honest, I didn't expect that much from this dinner because I had not had very good hotel dinners for the duration of my stay in Algeria. And while this was a very basic dinner, it was actually very tasty. After waking up and saying goodbye to the hotel, it was time for us to head to the airport. And we were actually in for a bit of a surprise. Now, if you watch my shorts, you may have already seen what happened next to us. So we either paid for or we got upgraded to first class on Air Algeria. Very, very prestigious. Wow. We've been flying with them for the last seven flights, so I think we have a status now. We definitely have status now. Platinum, Air Algeria. <laughs> I'm not sure why they upgraded us, but we saw first when we checked in online and then we were like, okay, we definitely have first, but why do we have first? Do you know, of course we had to take advantage. We had to check out the lounge. And like I said, this short is already on my page. As we boarded the plane, I knew that I would soon have to say goodbye to Algeria. And although I was not here for a super long time, I'm definitely so happy with the memories that I made and I really want to come back. Thank you for everything, Algeria. And thank you all for watching these videos about Algeria because I am literally running to my next flight. I'll see you for another day, another time, and another story. Thanks for coming to Timmy Moon with me.